Today here at RCV, I'm going to share with you this stunning vehicle, the 64 Chevy Impala Lowrider by Redcat. And the more I look at it, the more I'm impressed. And to give it some respect, I'm going to tell you about Jeff Reese, the man who started this revolution. I'm going to show you the engineering team at Redcat and how this came to be. And I'm going to give you a glimpse on the movement, the following that this car has garnered that gave birth to a vehicle such as this one. So Chris Villa from Hire One RC and JJ Customs dropped this off and it was sitting on my shelf for about a week and I said, wow, what a stunning vehicle. I don't want to mess with it. But it's really when I tilted it up that I realized what I was looking at. You know, I'm not, I'm not a, a low rider. I'm not familiar with the scene and it's, and now I know why they have mirrors at the bottom on the floor so you can see the underside. The underside is where the action is at, where most of the work is. And this is a stunning rendition. They said this belongs to Armando Mendoza. He did most of the work himself or all of it. And this sits at the shop at uh, JJ Customs in San Jose. And how this came to be is there is a man called Jevries from the Netherlands who who just started playing with toy cars. He was basically a bicycle lowrider builder, tuner, and he saw a picture of a model car and he said, hey, I can do that. So here's some, some footage of, of his early work and uh, really pretty stunning what he's done. So before I started out creating uh, lowrider model cars, I started out creating lowrider bicycles. And uh, when lowrider bicycle magazine came out, there was this picture over here of a uh, 64 Chevy Impala hopping. It's a model kit car. I was like, this is so cool. You can actually create a, uh, a working model lowrider using a model kit, like this one over here. This is the first kit I ever bought after that, after seeing that picture of a uh, 64 Chevy Impala. Well, when I started out, I, I used very basic components like small DC motors uh, on the chassis with a uh, fishing line that's pulling the front suspension down to make it hop. Uh, later on, I added motors to make it drive and steer, adding lights and sounds. And eventually, I tried to challenge myself even more by building uh, those mini truck uh, bed dancers. It can spin and it can tilt to the side. A friend of mine uh, who lived in the US, he, uh, he had one of those 67 Chevy Impalas made by Radio Shack. And he asked me, well, do you think you can make it hop? And I'm like, yeah, I think so, I can make it hop. Once I figured out how much weight I need to use to make it hop nice and slow, like, like the real thing, I was, I was just super excited about it. And uh, I forgot about line control model cars and completely went with the uh, RC lower the cars. Okay, and then what came to be is the the CEO of Redcat say, hey, that's pretty cool. We should mass market that because these are all handmade machines. And he, he challenged his engineering team to do it. Wow. I don't know if he knew what he's getting into. But I've, I've talked to the engineer, chief engineer as well. And he said, okay, it's a, it was, uh, they got into it. Their biggest challenge was making it easy to manufacture and really duplicatable and reliable uh, and, and, and put it in the hands of a, a consumer. It's, it's one thing to prototype these things, but to, to make it so it's in a box and the user can control it and, uh, and have it fairly, be fairly durable is, is a big challenge. So, but it was a three and a half year project and they got it done. Redcat developed a partnership with Jevries to start developing a model for mass production. This is where I came in. I'm Matt Jackson, Director of Engineering for Redcat. My first task was to re-engineer the Jevry's model into a product that could be mass-produced. The original model may have been a masterwork of DIY design, but the pulleys, strings, and springs that controlled the hopping were not reliable enough for a commercial product. At first we experimented with solenoids, but we found solenoids were unable to produce the necessary force for reliable hopping. From there, it was decided that a servo would be used, as we could adjust the hopping performance by modifying the length of the servo horn. The next roadblock in development was the radio design. Using a standard pistol grip radio wasn't going to work for the 64, as you need to be able to control the suspension at the same time as the throttle and steering. Our initial ideas included designs such as a completely separate radio to control just the suspension that you could pass to a friend. In the end, we worked with FlySky to develop a highly modified six-channel aircraft radio to meet the very specific needs of RC lowriders. All right, so I did have a couple of these machines and uh, to show you what's really cool is uh, RC Patina guy and, and I uh, saw his first vehicle and 
and he's going to show you how to operate this thing. And what's really cool is you unbox it, it's a beautiful box, and, and a nice experience. You know, you're like learning, even though you're a full-time, long-time, lifelong RCer, you're still going to discover things like you didn't know an RC could do. And he, here we are playing with, with this thing. So it has a lot of features, a lot of controls. So we have um, the front where we could toggle the switch and it'll bounce. And then we have um, where you can lift the car. So the lift, so the toggle is the same as the lift, huh? Right. But and just then you have the on. drop front. Ah, I want to lift it. And then you have a, um, you can drop it down. Then for the back, you can go side. Side, uh-huh. Other side. And then you have rear. The whole rear. Raise. But as I researched this car, I realized that, oh my God, there is something here. Basically, it's brought together the RC world, you know, the, the builder world, uh, and then the, the real lowriders uh, into a, a similar medium, into one medium where they can really harness their creative powers and the work they're doing is amazing so this this vehicle right here even though it is impressive it's one of the most impressive undersides that i've ever seen the it's half done you know when you see the other vehicles that i'll feature you open the trunk and there's a full-on boom box there with hydraulics you 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 open the hood there's an engine there the the interior is full-on with with uh, with carpeting, with fuzzy dyes, and 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 every smoke, <laughs> gold chain, and everything. So, just a glimpse into this world, which is you know very scale, very you know very very niche, but it is the one of the most pinned, most hardcore parts of the RC hobby. And um, thank you to thank you to Chris for bringing this over, RC Patina guy, for a lot of the work we've seen over the years, and also to Red Cat for uh, crystallizing, for seeing the opportunity and, and creating a product. Uh, they basically harnessed, partnered with so many different companies just to get this vision uh, into the hands of consumers. So very cool. Pretty much all the work has been done myself. I engraved the trims, two-tone chrome and gold. I did all the paintwork, the graphics, the flake. I did a trunk setup in there with the two pumps, everything wired as it should. I've taken it out a couple times, you know, when I'm out and about with the family, to the park, to the beach, just to kind of enjoy it a little bit. The feedback that I get it is just, it's kind of crazy, man. Like everywhere that I take it, I get a, a little crowd, you know, and, and you know, a, a lot of props. The level of customizations, the creativity, the diversity, it's very motivating to see, you know, so many different cultures and backgrounds. And sometimes you have like people like me, you know, since a kid, I've always wished to own a real 64. Unfortunately, you know, to this day, I haven't been able to, but I did what I would love to do to a real car on the 64. And for my next video, there's another RC Patina guy um, vehicle here. This is a uh, FMS Mashigan that uh, our buddy did. So I'll, maybe I'll feature this as well on the next one. All right. Thanks for that, everybody.